Hello everybody. So we've got this neat little kit from Electfreaks. It says 20 in 1 Wonder, Build, Wonder Building Kit, but actually it's now marketed as 32 in 1 because they've added 12 models to uh, what you can build. So we want to play with the line follower. That's this thing. Um, these are just plugs that came with it. So here's the line follower. There are actually two parts to this, two sensors. They are two infrared sensors that will detect white and black. And so depending on what you want it to read, you want to read white, you want to read black, and you make it do things. So now we've got cables to plug in. If you notice on the cables, the ends of them, one's a, one's a lot just you know skinnier, one's got some extra clip on it, and that's to hold into this better. Now, very, very important is that you pay attention to the lettering. Here on this side, it says ground at top voltage signal. On this one, it says signal voltage ground. Which is which? Well, red is power, red is voltage. And then usually black or brown are ground and then yellow or orange tend to be signal. So this one has to go this way. And this one, oh, wrong end. This one um, goes this way. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going to plug them into my uh, Wukong expansion board. I'm going to plug them in over here because this side is for servos. And it says um, S2. Let's see, I'm going to go this way with it. I'm playing with it this way. I could play with it over here this way if I wanted to, but I'm you know, working this way. Um, this side says S1, so I'm going to plug that into pin 1. Again, pay attention to the colors. Plug that into pin 1. Yep, got it. And then this side is S2. Remember, we're going to be down. The, the infrared is going to be reading down because our line is going to be down here. So I'm going to S2. I'm going to plug into pin two. Um, sometimes cable management is really, really important. All right, there we go. Now I got two motors. That's the whole point behind this is that it's a motor-driven thing that follows follows lines. Now, strangely enough. Because it says servo uh, sensor one over here, I'm going to make this be motor one. So I'm going to plug it in over here at motor one. I just want the motors and the pins on the same side. Motors and the servo sensors. Wow. Sometimes my mouth doesn't look great. Right. And then this one's going to be motor two. It just makes more logic. And then the micro bit goes in here. Bam. Alrighty. So now let's go to enter the web. So again, when you're going to want to read through the uh, all about the kit, glance through their you know their instructions. I wouldn't start building the stuff until you actually play with the code a little bit, just separately, so you can see how how it acts. But yeah, if you you've got a sensor, you want to look up the sensor and read about it just by itself. And obviously the expansion board also. These are all just pages on the Wukong site. And then they've got their own little wiki there. But we come to make code and we started a new project and we need, I don't need that, that anymore. So we need some extensions. We need the Wukong board extension. So we go to extensions and we search for Wukong. Bam, click it, and it's going to put uh, some new blocks in, um, Wukong and NeoPixels, because it's, it's got some NeoPixels on it. All right, so here's what we need to build. If this is a digital sensor, it's reading zero or one, black or white, so we need to, to read um, if something is zero or something's white, something's one, black or white. And then make the motors do what we want them to do, right? So here's how we'll start. 
this is logic. This is if statements. We need some if statements. Um, so we'll grab big, this big if statement, and we're going to need to expand it some. Okay. And then you can always contract it if you want. We'll get there. So there's this big true. If something is true, then do something. Well, we actually want two things to be true. And so this, that's called a compound statement. So we need an and thing. So we're going down here to Boolean. We come down to this and. So we need two things to be true. Um, and that's sensor one and sensor two. All right. So what do we mean sensor one and sensor two? Well, I mean that sensor one is reading zero and sensor two is reading zero. Or I mean sensor one's reading one and sensor two is reading zero. You know, so, so that kind of thing. So we need that to happen. So I can just copy and paste. Now, what do I mean by sensor reading? Well, that's a pin. That's whether the pin is high or the pin is low. Again, this is digital. Digital is zeros and ones. So we want to read the pin. If digital read pin, zero. Nope, I'm on, I'm on pin one. So if pin one reads zero and pin two, and pin two reads zero, do something, right? If they both see black, do something, right? Okay, I'm going to throw this in the forever so it shows up better, right? Okay, so if pin 1 reads 0 and pin 2 reads 0, do something. Well, what's that something? Well, let's run the motors. Set motors. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to pick 50. Now, I'm also assuming positive is forward. And that's the nice thing about these motors. If it's not, you can just actually flip them around uh, because they've got you know the drives on both sides. Else, else. All right, let's copy. I want to copy that, that whole big tr triangular box. And I want to stick it in there. Else, if pin one reads one, reads white, and pin two reads zero, reads black, then do something else. Well, what that something else is, is literally turn. Now I picked, I picked, I left this same speed and picked this as zero. So if motor one turns and motor two doesn't turn, the car's gonna turn. Now I could have just picked a slower speed and the turn would be more gradual, but for demonstration purposes, we need that to be zero. Um, well, we need one more else if. I don't need an else. I need an else if because I need to have another criteria. What if the other, what if the other side is off? Oh, darn. Don't go away. I hate when you do that to me. Where are you going? Sometimes it's hard to grab. Nope, not that. Hard to grab the one you the part you want. Just the part you want. Nope, that's not what I wanted to grab. Yeah, yeah, I want you there. But I want to try and grab you. There we go. Alright, now I don't and now what if pin two is off on the white? Well then obviously let's make motor two do something. Let's make motor two run but motor one stop. That's why I wanted to put the sensors and the motors, the numbers on the same side. Okay. So if we're on the black, move forward. Hopefully that's forward. Else if one is on the white, turn the other direction. If two is on the white, turn the other direction. All right. Uh, I don't have to put anything in here, but I will put something in there. I like lights. I like colors. So let's go to NeoPixels. Let's grab this. We got we got to tell it where the NeoPixels are. Uh, these NeoPixels are on pin 16, and there are four of them. So I'm going to use this like a warning sign. Okay, I don't need to see that. I don't need to see this. Um, so else, 
Um, let's show red. That means like if none of this is happening, show red. Show that something's wrong kind of thing, right? Okay. So let's plug into the micro bit and let's download the code. Plug into micro bit. You've seen down here, this is switched over because I've used these three dots to connect to my micro bit already. Download the code. And then we'll come see what happens. <laughs> All righty. So it's downloaded. Now let's go to the webcam again. And let's, oh, I didn't do something. I know I forgot to do something. We'll get that in a minute. We'll get that in a minute. All right. So motor started going. You see this is saying, hey, these are active. Now, they can't be up too high. They've got to be, you know, a certain distance. So as long as we're in black, you see both of the motors are going. When this slides over into the white, notice how this one, the light went off. This motor's running, but this one's not. That means we're turning that direction to go back onto the black. And then now they're both running. And then if this one goes off, you see how that light went off? Now my code said, hey, if this one is on white, turn this motor, stop this motor. And then I'll turn us and get us back onto the black. Now that's where I said, you know, you could make one motor go faster, the other motor go slower, and your turn is going to be more gradual. You can do that, but we just wouldn't be, have been able to see that here. Um, so that's what that does. Now, if it's on the ground, it's not going to see the white. I put it all the way on the paper. It's not going to see the white. It's not being able to detect. Um, it's got to be up in the air a little bit. And up here doesn't do anything. There are other infrared sensors, just like this, um, that are not designed and created that, that, do, a, that do a distance detection. And they're pretty good, but this is a unit that's made to do um, line following, read black, read white. So that's what it does. Now, we could actually make it read white, and when it gets on the black turn, that's just playing with the zero on the one kind of thing. Maybe you had a whole big black paper and you wanted a white line kind of thing. It depends on what you want to do. Boom. Boom. Okay? Again, the great thing about these motors is if this were going the opposite direction, I could just you know, flip it around and plug it in over there. And then it would go. Notice how it's kind of now going the wrong direction. Um, so there we go. There's one more thing I want to I want to do, I want to show. I probably should have. Um, we're not always sure what the pins are doing. So again, if they're both reading black, zero, zero is black, um, just move forward, same speed. If one is on white and one's on black, turn one direction. Else, if this one's on black and this one's on white, turn that, turn the other direction. Otherwise, show, a, show an error code, basically. Now, back to what I was saying. Um, we're not always sure what the pins are doing. Sometimes we want to set the pin. To say, hey, this is what I want the pin to start off as. So we come down here to pins, and we come to more, and we set it. We set the pin to up or down, to high or low. So if we set it down, we're basically setting it to zero. So we're just saying, hey, when we start this program, set that, set the inputs to zeros which will actually make the motors run right from the beginning. But it gives us an initial value, initial starting point, so we know what they are. Because sometimes we don't always, sometimes they like to keep us, keep us, keep a time from before. Now you could set them up if you wanted to. Um, and actually they, they wouldn't run. Let's try that. Let's turn you off. They, they wouldn't run until they got onto black. At least that's what I think. And you'll see that's, that's what happened last time I tried it. All right, so we're going to try that.
Dun, 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 dun. Alrighty, downloaded. Let's get over to camera. Alrighty. So. Nope, they still went. Interesting. Interesting if they still went they still went low. Huh. I know, sometimes it doesn't work. See if I'm up too high, it's not doing anything. So I don't know why they're setting it high and they still started off running. It shouldn't have. But so there is line follower. That's how it works. Enjoy.